Hello, I'm Michael Redmond, professional Nine Dawn Go player. Today, in this video, I'm going to show you a game I played in 1988 against Kyonari Tetsuya Nine Dawn. This was in the Judan tournament and in the third section of that. So that means I had won three or four games. I believe it was three games in this particular year in what was called the second section, which was for five to nine dons. And this was my first game in the third section. So I have the white stones. I played a star point and a three three point. And I've invaded the right side by splitting the side. This was the way to do it at the time. And black plays from the corner enclosure. This is a pattern that was quite often seen at that time. And I played this move, the jump on the fifth line. So uh, just to talk about how I was doing in 1988, this was a special year for me. Sometimes in my career, I've had times where I suddenly seem to know everything. My study of a few years probably just comes together at that time. And I'm having good results too. So I'm very confident and I'm having good results. And 1988 was such a time for me. I had been a five don for a few years, which put me in the second section. And I was competing with other five to nine don players. It also meant that at first I was having a hard time. And in 1988, I started to be able to, to win. So um, I had already won three games in the, that second section. My opponent was Kionari Tesia. He was one of the leading players in the Kansai Kin, and that's the Go organization for pros in Osaka. And I'd say he was one of the top players for, for that organization. He was fairly well established in the, the final sections of most of the tournaments. He was just a little bit older than myself. So I went to Osaka to play him. And I felt he was one of the first, you might say, famous players that I was challenging. And I felt that I had to fight to win. So I was playing an unusual move here. This jump at the fifth line was a brand new move at the time. It was popular in that year, maybe maybe a couple of years. It didn't last the test of time. It turns out that white does have a lot of issues with a black invasion on the third line here. And eventually people stop playing this move for white. So just to go back one move, the more common way for white to play, well, this is what Lila would suggest. This is what Lila actually did suggest in this position to, to play here and then to slide on the second line it is what a computer program would nowadays suggest. And if black answers here, white will play here. At the time, it was a common joseki, you might say, for white to slide, and then if black answers to play here. So this might be considered to be a slight improvement of that, especially if black will answer here, which is questionable. White, black will probably just leave it at this point. But in any case, white's trying to get one extra forcing move here. And it is fairly clear that that's working if we do get to this position. So this is a bit unusual. It is putting more focus on the fact that white can invade here later or play an attachment against the corner enclosure. And when white does start a fight on the right side like that, white's move on the fifth line here, let's mark the white move also. This, this stone is going to come into play. So I have some aggressive ideas here. So uh, this is a big move because when black has played this this high move here it's always a big move for for instance white is planning to attack the black corner situation there when black has both uh, sides open like this so white has a sliding move here and also a sliding move here it's open on the second line on both sides this is a kind of a tight position for black so it's pretty normal for black to want to play on the lower side to avoid that kind of an attack. And I extend on the side. That was the way we used to play it. Nowadays, um, with the more territorial approach that is suggested by computer programs, 
I think that white would probably just, I would probably play here now. But white plays high, and again high. So I'm not really worrying about the 3-3 invasion. In modern Go, I think people, including myself, would be more interested in the 3-3 invasion at this point for black. It is an option that black has right now. Black could have jumped into the 3-3 point. Something like this could probably continue. And white would then have to find some way to to build the moyo. I would probably play away at this point. Something something around here, for instance, is one option, like this kind of thing, just to build another wall to make a big moyo in the center of the board. This kind of idea. But in the game, black did not invade the 3-3 point, but played here instead. So this is reinforcing black's territory in the upper right. It's my opponent, Kionari Tetsuya, was a player who liked solid territories. He was a strong fighter, but he usually took territory first. So he's taking something that looks like it could be more than 30 points if that whole area becomes black territory. And you see he has added some reinforcing stones to make it relatively difficult for me to do anything about that. And at the same time, black is taking away the base of this white stone. So black is pre preparing to hopefully attack that white stone as a way to get into white's moyo on the left. So I play here. I'm focusing more on the left side of the board, whereas otherwise I could have played something like this to reinforce the relatively weak stone. And then black would be coming in on the left side. So that was a choice I had. Black invades, and now I played here. So this is the local tesuji, the tactic that is quite often played locally, just testing how black will answer. So black had a number of options. In the game, black plays the natural move here. Otherwise, black could have played underneath, which would be refusing to give white a living shape. But I would have some aji with forcing moves with this. Maybe this is going to be a forcing move or maybe not. I might have to start with the connection on the outside. You can see white is getting some potential forcing from, from the outside. Quite often it will not work in a straightforward manner just because there are so many black stones in the area, but it is something that white can use hopefully to reduce black's territory. Otherwise, if black plays here, uh, there's a lot of bad aji, although locally it is dead. It doesn't, there will be some problems with a cut here later. Actually, white might start white might start with the hane and then cut. There is going to be a lot of bad aji with this variation. So some potential for white to get some forcing moves from outside at least. So my opponent played it the most played the most uh, solid move. And this looks might look a bit strange, but black is just limiting white's forcing move to this this one. Whereas if black had cut on the second line, which was the more normal way, I would have some options of just, for instance, in a position like this, I would have a potential forcing move on the second line too. So black is reducing my potential there to a certain degree. It's, it's questionable whether there's a real difference there, but uh, this is the reasoning behind this move. Otherwise, black could have pulled back here, in which case I do have potential life. Actually, it's going to be a ko in the corner if I play here, and if I do something like this. This is going to be a typical corner shape that uh, hopefully you've seen before. Black has ways to make a ko out of it. For instance, this would be a ko, and it would be a ko in the corner. Or black could or black could play this way. This is another way to make a ko out of it. So it's not that there's just the one answer. This would also be a ko. I would probably not play the whole sequence there, but just leave the potential life. For instance, if we got that far, I would probably just leave it and start playing on the outside and continue the fight um, in the upper left area, leaving that potential ko for something I might try to do later on in the game. 
when black takes the corner territory like this, now I get some potential to force some from outside. This might have been a bit too strong a way to play. Nowadays, I think I would have just jumped to the second line, leaving the idea of playing something like this next and reducing black's territory. The value of playing this jump to the second line is that it puts more pressure on this black stone on the left. So it's, it's a stronger move towards the left side of the board. And while this move was sort of hoping for, for instance, this kind of variation would be ideal for white, black is not going to answer in that fashion when black has such a strong position, a very strong position here on the right. Black doesn't really need to, need to add stones to that. So black is not going to answer in this fashion in this game. Black's game move with this move. It's a very interesting move in that black is trying to add some stones to this before deciding what to do with that stone at M17. So black is going to focus on settling the mark stone first. And since my opponent was a top player and I felt that I was sort of challenging him I see here that I was just choosing an exciting move. I was choosing one of the more exciting moves when I played this Atari from underneath. I do remember that I spent a lot of time thinking about various options that I had. The more common way to handle this would be to play an Atari from the third line and then covering here. And locally it's just not working for black. Like if black plays here, I can connect here. Black will not be able to live in the corner, and my stones on the outside are healthy enough. Black will actually probably pull back here. After which, well, I can easily capture the two stones. I might try a bit harder by playing something like this. It looks like an interesting fight, like I could continue like this. It's hard to say exactly what should happen. It looks perfectly okay for me. But in the game, I played an Atari from underneath and then an Atari here, a very forceful way that I chose to play. In the game, Black immediately cut on the second line, but actually this did not work very well. I think I actually got a lead at this point in the game. So I'm, I'm going to say Black should have continued this way and then cut on the second line and crawl. So it, when Black plays this way, I have a choice at this point. I can continue to try to surround the outside, which would be this move, giving black a nice territory in the corner. And if I play here, there's still the option for black to play this move later. Black still has some potential there. While if I play this way, now of course black has the potential on this side. With the potential of running out, the latter does favor black here. So it's not a very happy position for white. And I would not do it that way, but I would crawl in the corner to capture the two corner stones. Black would play here, and I would add a stone to the corner to finish capturing those stones. In this variation, Black would probably continue with something like this. Black does have the squeeze here, so this looks slightly better than the actual game for Black. In the game, Black simply cut. I captured one stone. And it was like this. And Black has to choose whether to go into the corner or to play on the outside. But if Black goes into the corner, it's not going to be as good for Black as that variation I was showing just now. Because White will be able to capture the one stone here and has a very nice, a strong position there. With potentially a forcing move here also. So White has a very nice shape on the outside. I would be happy to play this way. In the game, black connected here, and I crawled. So this is a position that does require some tactical reading ability. The corner position is not settled yet. It's dangerous for white. But if black immediately extends here, something like this might happen and black is going to capture those four white stones. However, 
when I play like this, black has to answer because if black plays away, black has to answer here. If I say black, say plays away to some other point, white can throw in here and then play a honey here. And at this point, it doesn't matter which side black tries to fill from. If black tries to fill from this side, black will not be able to play the, the A19 point. Or if black tries to fill from this side, again, black cannot play an Atari because black is running out of liberties. And if black simply makes an eye, that's okay for those stones. But of course, the stones on the left here are eventually going to be captured. And again, the problem for black is that black has no way to fill white's liberties. So this would just be, the whole area would be uh, dead black stones. So black cannot do that, but it has to continue adding a stone there. And this, although black gets the corner, about 10 points in the corner, black did have to put in a lot of stones. So this would be just fine for me. I would play away probably something towards the lower side of the board like a shoulder hit or maybe an attachment here something that i might be able to use to enlarge in the center because i i have a lot of potential in the center of the board at this point my idea would be to give black the lower side and hopefully build some kind of a wall and then make some territory on the left side and in the center of the board because of this this move here that white can use to enclose black, black does not have time to go after the cornerstones with this move. And place here, basically this is to get rid of this attack, to create a connected position there. So I play once here, and I capture the corner. This is reasonable. I could have played this one, and it would have still been a similar position, but I simply just went after the corner. This makes sense too. And I think this actually is already a good position for white. White has something like 20 points just in this immediate area, just in, in the area here, which is pretty much white territory. So that area alone is 20 points. Actually, if you count all of the showing points and two for each black stone, you have to remember there's a black stone that was captured here. That's probably 21 points. But at this point of the game, you don't have to be that exact. And then, of course, there's some extra potential territory for white here. That territory that white has there is very difficult for black to reduce after white has such a strong position. And it's almost as big as all of black's territory. So if we look at black's territory, black has something close to 20 points here, a little extra territory here. And the lower side, this, this area cannot really be counted as black territory yet. So white is, even in territory, just counting this this one area is is just about equal to all of black's territory and white also has some extra areas so after this i'm okay with territory black continued here and i have to find a way to deal with that black area on the upper side so i um connect once actually i, I cut here i could say it's an interesting move it didn't really work 100 percent the idea was that if black answers here, then I will have the option to play a honey here with some extra potential in the center of the board because this point is forcing. I'm not going to play it so soon, but I do have that forcing move there, which will make it more difficult for black to play moves like this and move out into the center. Um, it will be pretty easy for me to stall that. So that's uh, the reasoning behind that move. In the game, black played the jump and I extended in this trade I'm getting a little extra potential territory with the option of capturing those four stones next but it's not big enough to do it yet so I play away and black splits me so this is a point in the game where I have an advantage in territory but I also have this these weak stones floating around in the upper side and I do have still some issues with a potential invasion here. So for the time being, I have to deal with those two problems at once. So I attached here. And the idea with this move was that I would play two forcing moves 
and this would reduce the potential of black invading here. So I would probably just play those two forcing moves, and then I would push here, and I would be fairly safe on this side too. So that was the idea, but it was actually not very reasonable because when black has this very solid position here, one of the major values of that position is that when white does something like this, black does not have to answer it. So black invaded on this side, a very sharp move. Um, I sort of agree with this move. It's the right direction of play for black. I answered here and then bumped against. It might have been better for me to play that hanging connection here. But I bumped against black and black has surrounded this white stone here. It's not dead yet. At this point, it would be perfectly fine locally for me to jump into the 3-3 point and offer to sacrifice that one stone with this. This would not be bad locally. There is the problem that this white group is not very much alive. So my real problem is on that side of the black invasion. So I add a stone to it. So with this stone, I'm pretty much alive. I'm, I'm alive in this area here. I, it looks like I have two eyes. Black answered here. And this move, while well, I've just said that I have two eyes, let's just play a random move for white and I'll show you that if black plays here and here and here, it is not 100% alive because because of this stone that black has just played. When I play here, black does have the option of throwing in here to make a co out of it. Or black could start with this stone and do the same thing. So there is this co that black is preparing to do at some point when black plays this move. So putting some pressure on the white stones. Another option with this move would have been to play on this side and just start to build the moyo on the, on the lower half of the board. So I peeped here. This is looking at two cutting points, the cut here, which would then set up a cut here. And also pushing through on this side is another way I can cut black off. So it's threatening black a little bit. And I jumped out. So I peeped once and I pulled back. With this move, I am putting just a little bit of pressure on this black group here, this black group because if I play if I play this point net next the hanging connection there black will not be a hundred percent alive so I'm putting just a little bit of pressure on that black group on the upper side and black did answer here taking territory while protecting it so I peep again and the real threat with this move is that I'm threatening to push through at this point and force black to connect at p15. So black played this move here. It's a very interesting move. I answered here, which actually was not very good. This was a kind of a turning point in the game where it became a bit difficult for me because I should have just played here, uh, keeping this, this black stone from connecting up to the, to the side. If I play here and maybe something like this, I already have something close to two eyes and I do still have the option of cutting here and forcing black to connect at this point which is I'm not in a hurry to do that but it's something that I can think of doing at some point more importantly I'm just one move away from having a live shape here so I don't have to worry about that white group very much so that would be just fine for me when I play here uh, gave black the opportunity to push through and connect that one stone threatening to peep here. At the same time, you can see that black has gotten rid of the cut here. If white cuts there, anytime it's gonna be a snapback. So that cut has disappeared in the process. Very efficient for black. So black covers here and I cut. And black plays here a very persistent move here, putting more pressure on this white group on the right. This was actually an opportunity for black to play away. 
on the, in the center. Playing here in the center is a very big move. And white would probably answer like this to get a living shape on the side. And this would be threatening in turn, for instance, if black plays something like this. It would be setting up this move, which now puts some pressure on black in the corner. Black can live with this move. Um, actually, might play an Atari first. And it's like this, like this. So black needs to put a stone in here to live. Black is alive, but uh, this side is not alive. So this is a, a real problem that black will have to worry about. Um, it's it's a it's going to be close. Not 100% sure, but maybe black can live in the center at this point. But at the very least, white will have... At the very least, I could play this move to force black to live on the side. So there's a lot of extra profit that I have waiting to happen there because I've played this move. So this is a very efficient way for white to live and that's what my opponent wanted to stop me from doing. But looking at the overall position, uh, I will say again that I think it was okay for black to play like this on the outside. Probably in this variation just to cut here and fix the problems that black has on the upper side. Black does have a nice structure here, a, a little moyo here. Even though white has the invasion at the 3-3 three, three point, the board position looks okay for black at this point. Black is, there was a point there where I, where I was saying that it looks good for white. I'd say at this point, uh, black has come back and it's looking a bit better for black. But black did, did not do that. Black played this move here putting some pressure on me on the side. So from this point on, a lot of the things we are doing have to do with the fact that this white group is not 100% alive yet. And I still do have an advantage in territory. I was telling you earlier in this video that white had a very solid 20 points here plus probably 10, point, 10 more points here. So if we count something like 30 points there on the left side, black just has six or seven points here and slightly more than 10 points here so added that is still less than 20 points and black's territory in the lower right area it's not it's not countable yet it's not really a territory and when i play this move i'm starting to put some pressure on black in the center of the board and it looks like i have options to be aggressive there so the whole whole overall position is not so bad for me and black is trying to change that by putting some pressure on me on the left side, on the right side of the board. So I uh, cap here. Black moves out. It's not really clear who's attacking who at this point. And I peep right here. So this move was all right. It was not such a bad move. But uh, at this point, I went wrong. So my first priority should be to settle this group because when black has played this peep here there's always the problem of a cut here so that's one simply connecting there is a pointless move i mean it's it doesn't have any territory associated with it so it's not a very happy move for me to play so i would like to find a way of settling that group on the right without having to connect up to the center Ideally, I would like these stones here to deal for themselves. Um, the best idea would be to be moving out to the left and isolating this black group here in the center of the board. What I actually did was I pushed through here, and I had an idea, but it was not very reasonable. The move I should have played was this one. First, I should say that if black plays here and I play here, White is already alive in this variation. So I would be alive on the right side. Uh, I would not have anything to worry about. So I could continue in the center of the board. So maybe I'd do a normal looking move would be something like this. Or since I'm alive on the right side already, I could be a bit more adventurous and for instance, play something like this and start to try to set up an attack on black in the center of the board. So this would be good for white. The other idea is that what happens if black plays here and here, and I could push through here. 
we would get into this kind of a fight. And actually, black is going to... Oh, excuse me. He's not going to play there. He's going to curl around once first. Black can play here. In this fight to capture, the race to capture favors black. White has... Although white will not play this exchange, if we play this exchange, it becomes easy to see who's winning the fight. White has these four liberties here. And black has five. So black is going to win the race to capture by one move. And white will not play that exchange. But white is fine because just about any move in this area, any stone, white has a number of moves that will be forcing. Maybe I should do that in a diagram. So like this. I always have the threat of playing here, which would capture black, winning the fight with these stones. Like you can see that white is going to win by one move. So this would be a disaster for black. So I have these various forcing moves after I've played here. Already any move in this area is going to set up pushing out here. I also have a fully connect with these forcing moves here. I have a connected shape and I have an eye on the right side. So my group is fairly strong now and I can concentrate just on attacking black in the center of the board. This would actually be good for white just because I have that extra move somewhere in this vicinity, a forcing move there. It makes it very difficult for black to protect those stones in the center of the board. So this would have been good for me. But the fact that I went in the wrong direction here gave me a lot of trouble. So I pushed through here and I cut on the third line. I thought I had something going here with a, a ladder and the cut on the third line. But black had a way to protect against both of those at the same time. Black curled around once and then played here. So this obviously it stops the ladder if white playing a move like this and also it stops the cut because if white cuts black can just go down and capture the two white stones on the left. So nothing is working there directly and because I'm still weak on the right side I still have this group that is not 100% alive and I'll, if black does cut for instance, at this point, then I'll have to worry about my stones in the center of the board too. So I don't really have anything, any time to do something with my stones on the side. I extended here and I'm starting to move out in the center. And at this point, black chose to finish off my stones on the side. This was an opportunity for black for instance, to play something in the center of the board. So black could have played uh, maybe something like this. Just putting some pressure on me in the center. And I do have some potential on the lower side. A move that I could think of playing would be the peep here. And if black pushes through here, then I can play here. Black doesn't have time to play this move because it, black is running out of liberties. So, in this case, I would be getting some compensation on the outside, and this would be okay. But black can just simply connect here. This kind of variation, it would be alive. White is alive here. It's just something like this. But when black pushes through here, I need one more move to be alive on that side. Actually, black will probably leave it at this point and play here. And you can see my group in the center there. This group is in trouble now. So I have too many weak groups to be able to handle this. Like if I, if we go back a move and say I do something for this other group in the center, then my group on the side is just dead at this point. So it's very troublesome for me. I don't really have time to live on the side like that. 
which means that it was an opportunity for black to instead of playing here black could have added a stone to the center made it much more easy for black in this case black does have a lot of territory in this area so black is gaining in territory probably taking a decisive lead in territory at this point but there is some trouble that black is going to have with those stones in the center so I have potential to, to gain the territory back and if at some point I can play this point I'm going to get something back in this area and actually in this game we're going to see that happen so black pushes through and cuts again this is a very aggressive move this was a point where black could have played a bit more cautiously with something like this and it, I think it's probably still okay for black but in the game it gets very exciting when black plays here and what I think black is trying to do is if I play here and here black is trying to combine this fight with the weak stones that white has on this side so for instance something like as it stands black has some trouble like if black connects on at this point I'm gonna cut here and this is pretty dangerous for black with black having weak stones on both sides and it's not so easy for black to kill white in the center like if black played something like this I would actually have options to escape for instance if black plays here I can force with this stone threatening to cut here and if black answers locally then I can push through here and black cannot cut so th this fight for instance a fight like this would be just too dangerous for black with white alive on both sides so I think what black is planning to do is black is going to prepare a little bit with something like this just threatening these stones so if I push through here black will cut threatening to cover here and capture my group and if I answer that this way now black can get away with something like this with that forcing move there if I cut now it's just a double Atari and this looks a lot better for black than the, the previous variation at least black does have the potential cut here so that that's going to be a problem for me in the game we're both in overtime I think at this point so we are experiencing a lot of time pressure but I was trying to reinforce this group and I had to cut black there anyway for instance backing off to try to save my stones on the right something like this this would just be too submissive and it would allow black to capture these two stones and I would have a losing position there because black has so much territory in this general area and white has not accomplished anything you might notice all of the stones I've played are virtually dominant points like I, I, all of the stones that are, are alive at this point are useless as far as territory is concerned so it's, it's certainly not working for white so I have to attack and I cut and in a way you can see that my play here has reinforced this white group so I'm strong enough that I'm not going to get captured now I extend and black cuts me off here so at this point I have two weak groups it's this group that is not alive and also this group which is not alive and it needs one stone this this group provided I capture the black four stones now I'm okay now it's okay for me and black continues with this and locally that has killed my group on the right it's just not alive so locally I could play here here and locally black can just kill it with something like this so it's just dead and I played this move 
Now this could have been the losing move if I had lost the game. This is a move where I had to cut this way and this way. And the difference here is the number of liberties that black has. In this variation, the potential race to capture between this white group and this black group is actually looking pretty good for white. I think this is probably a winning scenario for white, like black could play here. And because of black's lack of liberties, the local position here is something like this. Black has only one liberty there in the center. And it looks like white is going to win this semi. Like black has about five liberties at present outside. And then one, adding the one liberty here, black has only about six liberties. So white has an advantage in this race to capture. So this looks like it would have been a win for me. This was the correct way to cut black. And you can see that there are all these open spaces here where white has some extra liberties. In the actual game, all of those are going to disappear. In the game I pushed through here, my idea was to cut black with a potential code to connect up. But the drawback is that now black has some extra liberties in this area. This, this position now has four or five liberties, whereas the previous variation that I was showing you, white cutting this way, black had only one liberty. So that's a big difference. And also you can see that about two of white's liberties have disappeared. So the two liberties that I was counting, uh, they were at this point and this point. They're both filled up now. So even if black just connects here, this is already dangerous for white. Black chose to play what looked like a safer move. And now I have potential to live on the side. So if I play this, if I play another move, for instance, like this, I will have a living shape. And also I have the co here. So my group on the right is now conditionally, it has a co at least. Conditionally, it can survive and black covered here. I think black's, black is feeling maybe a bit complacent at this point because it would be better for black to crawl once and save the territory on the side here. In the game, I got to play that point. So I played here and after this move, I have actually potential to catch up in territory. So just to recap what the territory looks like, Black has slightly more than 10 points here and six or seven points here. So that's less than 20. And I could say it's 20 if we add a few points that black is likely to get in the center of the board. So we'll call that 20. And black has, after white has played this move on the third line, black's territory on the lower side is reduced a little bit. So it's, I'll say it's uh, slightly more than 35 points, this whole territory here. So black has somewhere in the vicinity of 55 points. White needs about 50 points to stay in the game. For the time being, I have about 30 points in this area. And so all I need is about 20 points. And I already have these four stumps. So the territory is looking good for me at this point. And I just have to find some way to settle this group on the right, which is not 100% settled yet, and realize my, my potential on this side of the board. So it looks like I have some winning chances now. This was a point where I sort of probably started adding stones to my lower side territory. This is a huge move here on the second line. And if I had played here, I would have had a, a clear lead at this point. In the game, I'm trying to keep pressure on black. But of course, black does have this one eye here. It's not as if black is in trouble. You can see that I'm trying to take away black's eye space, but the fact that black gets to connect up here to the lower side makes it relatively easy. Uh, black is catching up in territory. This little sequence we just showed, it would have been a lot better just going back a bit. So it would have been a lot better for me to simply play here and 
should be fairly obvious that my territory in this area is much bigger in this variation. So this would have been better than the game. In the game, I am losing a lot of territory while I attempt to attack black in this area. So this was um, this move here, making a life for the black group. Black now has a knight here and a knight here. So this established two eyes for the black group, but it was actually the losing move. This is where black should have played, played this one. And if white cuts, black can capture the one stone. And in the process of reducing White's territory, playing the end game sequence here, Black has actually made a potential eye at this point. So for instance, Black might not actually play the exchange, but Black could play this exchange here, and you can see that Black does have a potential eye. So then Black could continue with some big move. For instance, this move, this move here is a huge move that Black could have played. And then the game would have still been undecided, maybe even good for black. But in the game, black uh, played this move, so maybe he just didn't have time, a number of things to think about. He didn't have time to calculate the whole thing, or just overlook that potential. After I get this point, I'm not losing. I'm, I'm probably a bit ahead. Now we have this exchange. And I think this was a point where still if black had played some big move, uh, maybe this one on the side, it would have been a close game still. This is also starting an attack on white on the right side. Some big move would have kept the game close. This move was not, not the best move. It didn't gain enough territory. So when I play here at A13, on the left side here, this sort of clinches my lead in territory. And the last problem that we have is that black is going to molest my group in the on the right side. When black plays here, this is setting up a co on the right. So just to look at the position on the right side of the board, there was a point where I was saying that black can attack white with this move. Locally, it's just a co here. Also, white does have the option of playing here. And this could be troublesome for black because just locally, it's already not very clear what black is going to do because there was a co there if black plays something like this. But you can see that um, if black connects, black is already losing the, the fight to capture, the race to capture. So white does have this forcing move at six. And that's why black started by playing this move. So black is going to force here. If white answers it, then when black does play, black can do it this way too. Black could play it from this side. Uh, when black does do this, it's going to be a co for the life of white's group. So the co here, white has to win the co in order to survive on the right side. So when black played here, I started to uh, protect the right side. Provided white fights this co or plays a move on the right side of the board, the group is gonna be okay. So it's just the question that black is threatening to play the, the snap back here. I do want to fight the co to get a relatively good result. And so for a while, we're going to be fighting this code. It's not a direct code because at any point, even if I lose the code, I can live on the right side with this move. It's just going to be a bit painful. So I'm playing code threats that might not, well, I'm threatening Black's group on the upper side, actually. But I'm just playing relatively s small code threats sometimes. And it's not a big deal because uh, it's not as if I'm going to immediately be dying on the right side of the board. And so finally, I win the co, and black has captured these three stones. So black did get some profit out of that. But 
after I've played this huge move on the lower side and also gotten the big move here, it's okay for me to give a few points back. And, well, frankly, I had no choice with that weak white group on the right side here. So that was okay. And the rest of the game is just end game. I'm finishing off, getting rid of some of the random codes that could have happened. And we take the game to the end. This ended with white winning by two and a half points. So it was still a fairly close game. So that's the end of the game. In this game, um, it was the first round of the third section. At that time, the, the Judon tournament had a third section that reduced the number of players who got into the final tournament to, I think it was a total of 16 players. And then the final tournament was a tournament in which you could lose one game and stay in the tournament. So I think it's called a double hedron or something like that. So there's they used to call it a loser's tournament. I think they call it um, a recovery tournament or something like that after a while. I was still in the third section. Um, my next game actually was against another famous player. I'll probably make a video of that also in the third section. I had to win two games in the third section to get into the final tournament. And as I was saying at the beginning of this video, 1988 was a big year for me and it was especially big in this Judon tournament. So. I'd like you to look forward to more videos about the Judon tournament, and I hope you enjoyed this one. So if you did, please give the thumbs up and sign up to my channel if you haven't. Thank you.